so a little disclosure before we start this video lesson i was a bit sick this week and maybe you guys can tell that i'm still a little stuffy so sorry about that um, i'll do my best hey everyone danny here i'm excited to join you guys for the home group lesson this week as we continue the series that we started on a walking with christ specifically talking about our maturing in jesus our maturing in our faith um, so this week we're going to be covering a very important topic and i'm excited just to walk it through it with you guys so we're going to be covering god's will for our life um, i just remembering my life as a believer for the past few years i just know that i went through different seasons in my life where i would i remember just days where all i would think about is god and all i would think about is jesus and his will for my life and what i'm going to do next for christ and i remember other days and seasons that i went through where i would was just running away from god and um, where I wasn't serving Him and where I was living for myself. And I could just boldly say that apart from God's will and apart for, from His calling for your life, there is truly no happiness and there is truly no, no purpose for you. I want to say that your purpose, the purpose that God has for your life, the purpose that your life holds is found in God's will. It's found in God's presence. And I could just say that going through just a few short years with God, I want to say that there is nothing outside of God's will for you. There is no happiness. There is no purpose. There is no joy outside of the plans that God has for your life. I just want to share uh, one of my favorite verses uh, to you guys before we get into this topic. It's found in Psalms chapter 16, verse 11. It says this, it says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I want to say that God has an amazing plan for your life and his calling for you is like no other. And it's in his presence where you find this calling. It's in his presence where you find your purpose. So I want to just start off with a question. I want to, I want you guys to discuss this. Does everyone have a calling? And if everyone does have a calling does it include all little things and details like where you live where you work who you marry or is it more general like the ministry that you do and the lifestyle that you live so does everyone have a calling and if so what does it look like So hopefully you guys came to the conclusion that yes, you are called by God. There is no one else that could replace your calling in the body of Christ because there is no one else like you. Maybe on your own time or as a group, you guys could look into 1 Corinthians chapter 12 where it talks about how God has placed you into his body and how God has placed you into his family. And I wanna tell you that you're irreplaceable to God. He has a very unique calling for you and he has amazing plans that he has prepared ahead of ahead for you and just i want to share a few things that are on my heart regarding this topic is that god's calling for you is not made is not you're not made for god's calling god's calling is made for you so what do i mean by that is that god's calling is tailored to who you are as a unique individual um, some some of the key indicators of whether or not you're fulfilling God's plan for your life is that are you happy in what you're doing uh, for God? Are you do you feel fulfilled? Do you feel the just the pleasure and the and just the excitement in what you do for God? Because God's plans for your life, uh, He tailored them to who you are as a person, to your strengths, to to just the person that God has created you to be. So I want you to really look into yourself to find God's calling. Uh, one of the biggest ways to step into the plans that God has for your life is by beginning to get to know yourself. It's by beginning to develop yourself as a person and to develop the character and the individual that God has created you to be. Um, an example for this is a simple acorn. Um, I know this is a funny example, but it speaks tr true to my life because I remember hearing this example. Basically, 
a person once asked a little kid, he said, what do you see in an acorn? And the kid said, well, nothing, I just see an acorn. And the person said, no, you have to see a tree. And another person said, I don't only see a tree and an acorn, I see a whole forest. So that in that concept, I want you to understand that God's plan is in you. It's not ahead of you. God's giftings, God's purpose for your life, it's hidden within you. It's hidden within you as an individual. And the first step that you have to make to see God's plan fulfilled in your life is begin investing into yourself and begin developing yourself. Allow the Holy Spirit to change your life, to transform your life. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and to develop you as a believer. And uh, one misconception I want to talk about before we go on into this topic is that the fact that many people say, hey, if God has called me, he's going to lead me there and he's going to make it happen. And I want to say that God has called you and God has called millions of other people that are in this world. But there's a misconception where we wait for God to do something, but God has done everything on his side. You know, God's calling for your life is your decision. It's your choice if you want to make God's calling happen in your life. It's your choice if you want to be obedient to God's voice in your life or you want to rebel and stay where you are. So I want to go on into this topic and talk about the process. Um, so if we could come together and discuss just this question is what are the steps that we need to take as individuals to see God's calling happen in our lives? And um, at, from the, your group, I want a few of you to share just testimonies of maybe some of the mistakes that you guys made when trying to obey God or trying to serve God. What are some of the mistakes you guys have made? So if you can come together and discuss this. So after discussing this question, I hope you see that God's call for your life is an everyday process. You know, sometimes we're looking so much of what's to come and what's ahead that we miss on what God is doing right now in this moment in your life. You know, it's important to have vision and it's important to look ahead as to where God is leading you. But it's also to very, very important and it's a huge priority to understand that God wants to use you right now. God wants to speak to you right now. God wants to fulfill his plan that he has for you today, today. So I want you to be cautious of this. I want you to ask the Holy Spirit this week to show you what he wants you to do this week, to show you what he wants you to do today in, God, in, in the light of God's will for your life. And a, a, a huge example also of the process that it takes to walk into God's will and walk according to God's plan for our life is found in 1 Samuel chapter 17. This has actually been discussed uh, this last week at youth service, and I just want to remind you guys of this awesome example. It's about David. And David was already anointed as king. And he already found out that God has huge plans for his life. And the prophet Samuel had already anointed him. And here in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 17 through 19, it talks about David and his heart and his character. It says, One day Jesse told David his son, Take this sack of cracked wheat and these ten loaves of bread and run them down to your brothers in the camp. And take these ten wedges of cheese to the captain of their division. Check in on your brothers and to see whether they are getting along all right, and let me know how they're doing. Saul and your brothers and, the, and all the Israelites and their war with the Philistines in the Oak Valley. So we see during this time, David was called. He knew that the prophet anointed him to be king. He knew that God had huge plans ahead for him, yet David was faithful where he was. He obeyed his father, and by obeying and being faithful to his father where he was, he was obeying and being faithful to God. He went to his brothers, he brought them food, and there he saw Goliath. Seeing Goliath, he remained faithful, he fought for God, and he, he saw victory. Then we continue reading the story of David. He began to conquer kingdoms for God. And we see that he began to conquer countries for God. And we see that he became one of the greatest kings that Israel had ever known, bringing hundreds of thousands of people to serve the living God. And all of this happened from when David was a little shepherd boy being faithful where he was. I want to tell you that being faithful where you are 
and trusting God where you are is going to lead you into where God wants to see you tomorrow. So what you're doing today is going to impact what you're going to be doing tomorrow. So I want to encourage you to be faithful where you are and I want to encourage you to obey God today and follow him and trust him for your tomorrow. Um, so going on to the next point and the last point, I want us to talk about God's presence. So we talked about the fact that it's important for us to fulfill God's will. It's faithfulness and it's also character and growth, allowing God to change us and transform us because the level that we fulfill God's will in our life is the same level that our character is transformed and our life is transformed. So the more you get transformed and the more you allow the Holy Spirit to change your life and give you the character of Jesus, the more you're going to see God entrust you with His promises and entrust you with the souls of other people. But I want to, but oftentimes we talk so much about the fact that, hey, God has a call for your life. God has huge plans for you that we often don't talk about how we get there. And I want to spend a few minutes just talking about how we get to where we are right now to where God wants us to be. And this is found in Luke chapter 6, verse 12 through 14. We, we see this from Jesus Christ's example. It says this. It came to pass in those days that Jesus went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve whom he also named apostles, Simon, who he named Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, John, Philip, and so on. So we get the biggest example from our Lord Jesus Christ when he walked on this earth on how he was fulfilling God's will. It says he spent all night in prayer. He went to the mountain to pray. He spent time in the presence of his Father. And going down from that mountain, going down from the presence of God, he knew who to choose. He knew where to go. He knew what to say. He knew how to pray for people and see them healed. He knew how to walk into his destiny and walk to the cross because he lived in the presence of God. I want to encourage you and to tell you that it is impossible to fulfill God's plan for your life without His presence. You know, God is our Father and we're His children. And when we're spending time in His presence, we're hold, grabbing a hold of His hand and allowing us to lead us forward. When we spend time in His presence, we're allowing the Holy Spirit to change us and to mold us and also to fill us as vessels for us then to go out and to pour out into this world. So I want to tell you that it's important, it's vital, it's necessary for you to, fulf to fulfill God's will for your life. But how do you do that? It's by spending time with God. It's by spending time in His presence. It's by spending time with Him and His Word. You know, you could do a lot for God. You could live your whole life maybe doing different ministries, maybe going to different places, all for the name of God. But I, I want to tell you that if you're not a woman of prayer, if you're not a man of prayer, if you're not a person that knows the presence of God, that those things mean little to nothing in the kingdom of God. I want to tell you that the presence of God is the most important thing for your life. The presence of God is what will lead you into His destiny. Um, and with that, I want you to discuss the last question before we close. It's, what is blocking you from spending time with God? How can you dedicate more time in your day and maybe in your week um, to spend in the presence of Christ? And to close, I want to leave you with a quote. Uh, it goes like this, that God's call and destiny for your life is in his heart. The closer you get to his heart, you won't be able to miss his call and his destiny for you. So I want to encourage you to continue to pursue God and for you to know that God is for you and God's leading you into great and awesome things. God bless you guys. And it was awesome to be with you in home groups.